Our water issues are major. Uh, it's a very, very big concern for us because if we don't have water, we don't have almonds, we don't have almonds, we, uh, we're out of business. The biggest issue is that we, uh, we currently are at zero percent allocation and you can't get any less than, z than zero percent. Our supply that we're used to getting from, from the canal is no longer there, so we have to get creative. We have to um, drill wells and try and get some water from there, which we haven't had much success with because of the quality of water that we have here on, on our property. Um, if that doesn't work, then we have to go out on the open market and see if we can buy some water from someone else that may have some and that's not inexpensive. We're in a drought, let's face it. <laughs> but for California, this is, this is just the beginning. If you look at some of the research that University of Cal uh, California in Santa Cruz has done on the tree ring surveys, you'll find that even though it hasn't rained this year, we're sort of in a wet cycle yet for California. I think the idea of having cheap water that's coming down the ditch forever, I think that's long gone. I don't think it's ever going to happen again. I think that the cost of water forces people to conserve it. This year specifically, we're, we're just really having to uh, be on top of our irrigations and really pinpointing them and making sure we're not over irrigating at all. We, we've been limited to how much water that we're going to receive this year and so we having to make sure we're <clears throat> irrigating exact only when we need it and the exact amount that we need. One thing that I started uh, playing around with last year is using aerial imagery and they fly over the ranches once a week and they send me an aerial image of those ranches and they can layer it with uh, infrared technology and some other types of layers that show me leaf temperature, uh, water stress of the trees so I can actually use real-time aerial imagery to see if my trees are stressed, if I need to water them or consequently how well my irrigation that I just applied did or how even it was. This is what a soil moisture meter is. What that is is a probe. It goes down five feet and every uh, foot I, there's a little sensor on it and each sensor tells me how much water is in that foot of soil. They transmit every 15 minutes to my computer or my phone so I know what's going on in real time. I'm still going out looking at the trees, visually looking at their health, seeing how they look. Um, but I'm also using my soil moisture meters a lot as well to see how dry the ground is. Um, I can actually, on, uh, on the computer using these uh, soil monitors, watch the tree suck water out of the ground during the day. I can see how much it uses every day out of the soil. So I can add that up <clears throat> and only irrigate to replace the exact amount of water that my trees were using that week or that day. So I can get really, really precise about how I'm irrigating. In the old, old days, the farmers used to flood irrigate with a whole bunch of water and you'd have a foot of water, let's say, standing on the ground <clears throat> to flood. That's like you drinking eight gallons of water all at once and then not feeling real good rather than drinking a little bit of water throughout the day, all the day like you should. Well, that's what we're doing here with this irrigation system, giving the trees a little bit of water every day just to what they need for that day. Keep them happy all the time. We depend on this ground and we depend on the water that, that we get from the hills. We have to be good stewards of it or we're not going to be here. I want my kids, the fifth generation, to be able to come out, to have the opportunity to come out here and farm. Um, so I take a lot of pride in, in how careful and, and how efficient and, and how we do things. If we don't have the water, uh, just like this orchard you saw across the road that was pulled out, that's what's going to continue to happen, definitely. We can, we can struggle through this for a couple more years, but if it continues to stay on the road that we're on right now, 
who knows where it's going to end up, and it could be very sad. Whenever we get a chance to give uh, people from town or, or from other areas tours of what we do and, and our fields and everything, we jump at every chance because a lot of people just think that their food comes from the grocery store. You know, that gallon of milk comes out of the refrigerator at the grocery store. Well, no, it came out of that cow at that dairy over here. It's, it's fantastic to see, to, to give people and to educate them on how our food is really grown and produced in the state. And when they get to see it, and we get to explain how we do and, and why we do certain things. It's just like a light bulb goes on and, and they get it, they understand it. If, they, if, if almonds were no longer on the, on the store shelf, what would the uh, consumer say? Would they be upset? I would think so based on the demand we've seen. So uh, we're committed to it. Uh, I think our customers are committed to it. So hopefully we can continue on and we can make it through this drought.